Just normalization. I'll admit, uh, you guys know that me and etymology, I'm really keen to know uh, what the meanings of words are and um, where they come from. And there probably is some sensible meaning for this, but I, I haven't worked out what it is, okay? So what does it mean to normalize a database? Uh, what's the overarching goal of database normalization? Here it is in a sentence. We want to make a database as efficient as possible. The overarching goal of database normalization is to increase database efficiency as much as we can. Okay? Now, there are a few specific objectives that get at that, that make a database more efficient. Okay? So, for example, uh, a typical thing would be, you know, if you've got, say, an address, an address, hmm. Uh, let's think of, say, the address of the school, right? Now, that's 17 to 31, Felton Road, <coughs> Carlingford. And what else could we put on here? We could put the state, and we could also put the postcode, okay? Now, there's an address. Now, you could make one field out of this entire piece of data, okay? But I would suggest it's not very efficient. It's not very helpful to you, okay? Um, you know... Basic reason, you've got all these spaces in between all these actual discrete separate pieces of data. Example, you can say the one piece might be the street number, right? Street number, that would be one piece on its own. Then you might have the street itself, street name, and then you would have suburb, state, and postcode, right? Now, in between all of these, uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five different sections, different separate pieces of data, and you've got all these spaces that actually go between there, or commas or whatever, that uh, you would use to delineate these in the field. So if this was one field, you're wasting these spaces in here, right? So this is the first thing. Secondly, if you wanted to search through this, you remember we were talking about queries yesterday, right? Well, suppose you wanted to find all the people who live in one suburb, right? Carlingford, okay? It would be really tough to find that if everything was one field. Okay? You'd have to say the address contains, and then you have to start using some wild cards. You remember we talked about those yesterday. Be like address equals star, Carlingford star, you know, that'd be weird, right? Far easier just to say suburb equals Carlingford. Okay? That's a much more efficient way to search through this database. Okay? So, um, there's one of the specific ways we can improve the efficiency of a database, and there are other ones as well. They'll come out as we go through this example. Okay, so I've got a, um, a Google spreadsheet here if you want to open it up. should look like this. Okay, now the important thing about this is that there's a few different uh, sheets down the bottom here. I want you to leave them for now. We're going to progress through them. Okay, and we're trying to make the, uh, this database as efficient as we can. We'll get more and more efficient as we go. So let's start. Have a look at the database. Uh, I hope you've got it open there. And you can see, well, if you were to name this database, what would you call it? What do you think it's about? Hmm. If you wanted to name this table, hmm, uh, it's got information about customers, but it's not a customer table, is it? Right? It's, it's actually telling you lots of other things that relate to you know, different pieces of data. Probably a better thing would be uh, purchases or orders or invoices. Right? So you can see invoice number here, this is the primary key. Do you see that? Right? That's, a, that's one of the ways you can tell what a database is about. What's the primary key here? Invoice number is probably the best primary key. Okay? And you can see they're going sequentially down. Now you can see there's some problems here. Number one, you've got this address business happening, which we already talked about. So it's uh, street addresses already is, you know, I can break this up into a few things. But there's other problems too. Can you notice, over here on the right-hand side, I've got quite a few what we call repeated fields, right? So number one, we said you can make a database more efficient by splitting up fields, okay, uh, into as many sort of separate parts as you can. But number two, this is a really inefficient thing we want to get rid of. I've got product one, unit cost one, units one. And then I've got all three fields repeated again. And then all three fields repeated again. I assume because this guy, Fred, Right? He bought three different kinds of products at once, so my database needed to have three different sets, even though no one else has bought three, but I need these extra fields over here. 
Okay, so you can see all over here, these spots down here as well, um, they're inefficient. They're a waste of space. The database has to set aside space in the uh, database for these spots, even if there's no data that actually goes in there. Okay, so that's not very efficient. So how can we start to improve this? Well, uh, you might want to move on to the uh, next sheet here. This stands for first normal form. Now, let's see how it's been improved. Number one, I've taken what used to be full name. I've broken it up into two. You see how it's a smart way to do things, right? Because usually if I want to get things in some kind of order, the names, we don't usually go first name alphabetical, right? And in our initial database, that's the only option you've got. So you see how I've broken that apart. First name, last name. That's the first thing. Okay. Secondly, you can see I no longer have three copies of these fields over here. I don't have product one, unit cost one, units one, and more of them over here. I've just got these three. Now, because I've chopped off this uh, part, if you like, I've vertically just sliced that off, I don't want to lose the data that was over here. So that's why now you can see one, two, three rows three records for Fred Smith now, right? And these correspond to the three products that he bought. Does that make sense? Okay. So what have I done? Um, I've, I've broken up this field here into two, and then I've gotten rid of these duplicate fields over here. Getting rid of the duplicate fields, <laughs> then I had to add some more rows in. Okay. Okay, but who else can see a big glaring problem? This is an improvement, but there's still a, uh, some big glaring problems with this database. Any suggestions? Any thoughts? Okay, all right, number one. Uh, now, okay, well, let's go with that. Uh, if Fred had not bought three products, suppose he bought 300, okay? It'd have to be 300 rows just for him, okay? Now, 300 rows is not so bad. Databases can get a lot bigger than 300. I think the reason why it's such a pain here is because every time I talk about Fred, I have to talk about Fred and his address, right? And those get copied every time. Well, he lives at this same place all the time, I assume, right? So it will be far more efficient for me, rather than having his address here in this table that's really about purchases, right, and make a whole new table. What would you call it? The customer table, right? So I'm going to need to introduce a customer ID here that talks about this customer, and then I don't have to repeat all of this address information every time. You can also see, if you pay attention over here on the right, the products as well, right, you've got a similar issue with the products. Uh, say the, um, the trinket, okay, costs $3.65. Well, it costs $3.65 every time someone buys someone. Someone buys it, right? Oh, I got this price wrong. Sorry about that. I'll fix that up in a minute. Um, so I've got what we call redundant data here. Do you remember that? Redundant. It's repeated. It's just duplicated for no good reason. And supposing, you know, um, in fact, this is a really good example that I've introduced an error in here, right? The trinket doesn't really cost $23.50. But I might not notice that because I look at the other places the trinket costs, right? right? And I, I don't have to uh, look through all of the data to see, oh, it looks fine. Okay? So not just is it inefficient, it, it brings in uh, sort of places for errors to creep in. Does that make sense? So let's try and improve this a little further. Okay? Let's go to the next sheet over. What have we done? I've introduced two things. Uh, in a sense, this table is worse than the previous one. But I'm getting there. I've introduced a customer ID. Okay? So that's going to let me describe Fred and Mary and Sue. Okay? And I've also introduced a product ID. So in the next uh, version of this that's improving it, right, I won't need to talk about Fred. I'll have moved Fred and Sue and Jack and so on into a separate customer's table. I will also have moved all these grommets and trinkets and wigwams. Right? I'll move them into a separate, I guess we would call it a products table, right? So from one flat file database, I'm now going to make a relational database with three tables. Much more efficient. Okay, So let's move on. There we go. That's looking pretty good. right? That's a big improvement. Now, of course, uh, I haven't included here the customer's database or the product's database, but you can see what's replaced it. right? There's my customer ID. There's my product ID. If someone, for example, uh, a customer moves, okay? I only have to adjust their address in one place, rather than in like 10 places, okay? Far more efficient. And there's one more thing I can do to improve this, okay? You can see here, 
invoice number, order number, and invoice date. Can you see that these three fields are all what we call functionally dependent on each other? They're, they're not just uh, three completely disconnected fields, they're actually related, right? And so these three fields are a really good candidate to make into a fourth table, right? So this is my purchases or my invoice, sorry. This is my purchases table, right? Uh, I'll have a customers table, a product table, and I'm going to introduce one more, an invoices table, which will include this data. Okay? So finally, from our original database, this is what I'm left with. Now, it's a bit harder to read. It is a bit harder to read. You look at it and you think, well, uh, I, don't, I don't know who this is and I don't know what that is. I don't know how much it costs. But the database has it all tucked away in a far more efficient form. Does that make sense? So this is a normalized database. You can see how it's much more efficient and there's less redundant data.